Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're finally going to round out our Radeon RX 5600 XT coverage with another half dozen models. Now if you missed part one, we did check out the Sapphire Pulse, XFX Thick 2 Pro, Powercolor Red Dragon, MSI Mech OC, Gigabyte Winforce OC, and the stupidly named ASUS Tough Gaming X3 EVO OC. Out of those models, the Sapphire Pulse was the winner, and the runner-up award went to the far too many things in its name, ASUS Tough EVO. If neither of those models happen to be available in your region, or available at a reasonable price, then the third best option was Power Colors Red Dragon. However, there are a few other well-priced models that we're yet to look at, such as Gigabyte's Gaming OC, ASRock's Phantom Gaming D3, and even XFX's Thick 3. So today I'll be testing out those cards along with the Power Color Red Devil, MSI Gaming X, and ASUS ROG Strix. For testing, I'm using our standard GPU test rig, which is built inside the Corsair Crystal 570X. And of course, we're testing with all the glass panels installed, though please note the system is fully populated with 120mm fans, so airflow is still quite good, despite the all glass design. Also, please note that all models have been flashed to the latest VBIOS, so those that shipped early on with 12 gigabits per second memory support, but were later updated to support 14 gigabits per second memory, are now running at the faster memory speed. Okay, so we'll start by looking at a single frame rate comparison in F1 2019, and then we'll dive into clock speeds, temps, and operating volume. Admittedly, this graph does seem a little confusing at first, and that's because the first six models tested are a lighter shade of blue, but I promise for the following graphs, it is quite a lot easier to follow. Basically, all you really need to note here is that the more premium 5600 XT models are within 3% of one another when comparing FPS performance. So in other words, they're all very much the same. And the reason why performance is much the same is because the core clock speeds are all very similar. Here we're looking at a difference of just 1.5% when comparing the peak operating core clock frequencies. When looking at the GPU edge temperatures, we see that the MSI Gaming X and ASUS ROG Strix models deliver the best results, peaking at just 60 degrees. Both are beaten out of the box by the cheaper Tough Evo, but that model does spin its fans at a more rapid rate, and that sees it generate quite a bit more noise, and we'll get to that soon. Out of the box, the next best performer was the Phantom Gaming D3 from ASRock, peaking at just 67 degrees. Then we have the Gigabyte Gaming OC at 70 degrees, while XFX's Thick 3 Ultra and Power Colors Red Devil ran the hottest at 73 degrees. And while that does make them the hottest, it is still a very safe operating temperature. Now, here's a look at the out of the box hotspot temperatures, and here the ASUS ROG Strix model puts in the best result, peaking at just 67 degrees, which is quite remarkable. Clearly the ASUS cooler is making excellent contact with the GPU die, and given the disaster that was the ASUS 5700 XT series, I'm happy to see that they've put a lot of work into finally getting this right. The MSI Gaming X also performed very well, and despite running 7 degrees hotter than the Strix, a peak hotspot temperature of just 74 degrees is still very impressive. Even the Gigabyte Gaming OC at 79 degrees is still very respectable, and of course the same goes for the ASRock Phantom Gaming D3. Hotspot temperatures really only start to get up there with the XFX Thick 3 Ultra and Power Color Red Devil, so it'll be interesting to see how hard the fans are working on those models. Before that though, we need to take a look at the out of the box GDDR6 memory temperatures. Again, the ASUS Strix model performed exceptionally well here as we see a peak memory temperature of just 68 degrees. The MSI Gaming X also did very well, peaking at 70 degrees, and the ASRock Phantom Gaming D3 was also surprisingly good, hitting just 72 degrees. The only disappointing results here come from the Gigabyte Gaming OC and Power Color Red Devil. Here we see that a secret to the success of the ASUS ROG Strix and MSI Gaming X models is very likely optimized voltages. Well, that and the big boy coolers. When compared to the Power Color Red Devil, the Gaming X consumed 10% less power, and that is a huge saving on the thermal budget. And those power savings are even larger when compared to the most power hungry model, the XFX Thick 3 Ultra. In that matchup, the Gaming X consumed 16% less power. Okay, so here's a look at the default fan speeds when under load, and we find some rather interesting results. The XFX Thick 3, for example, didn't look that impressive in the previous testing, and here we see why. The two fans were spinning at just 900 RPM, the lowest fan speed of any 5600 XT model. The Power Color Red Devil was also a weak performer when compared to the Gigabyte, ASUS, and MSI versions, and here again we see why. It's simply a case of the fans spinning at a much slower speed, here just 1100 RPM. The Gigabyte Gaming OC was still quite impressive given its fans were spinning at just 1200 RPM, and the same is also true for the MSI Gaming X, which saw its fans spinning at just 1300 RPM. 
The ASRock Phantom Gaming D3 hit 1600 RPM, which is still very quiet and certainly noticeably quieter than the more affordable models that ran over 1800 RPM. Finally, we see yet another reason why the ASUS ROG Strix looks so good out of the box, at least when compared to the models we're focusing on for this video. When you combine the highest RPM speed with the optimized voltages and huge cooler, yeah, you have a pretty decent performer out of the box. But when it comes to operating volume, none were as quiet as the Sapphire Pulse, though the XFX Thick 3 Ultra is pretty darn close, and in fact with just one decibel separating the two, it's close enough to call it even. The Power Color Red Devil was also very quiet, as were the Gigabyte Gaming OC and MSI Gaming X models. Really, it is only the ASRock Phantom Gaming D3 and ASUS ROG Strix that were noticeable, and while I wouldn't say either were loud, the 43 decibel noise level of the Strix made the low thermal results a little less impressive. Okay, so what I've done here is lock the fan speeds of all models at 1600 RPM, and this saw them all generate a very similar level of noise. This allows us to really see which models are high quality, and well, the models that aren't quite in the same league. The standout here is the MSI Gaming X hitting a peak edge temperature of just 56 degrees, and that made it 3 degrees cooler than the Sapphire Pulse. The ASUS ROG Strix does quite well hitting 61 degrees, though that does make it just a degree cooler than the Gaming OC, and 2 degrees cooler than the XFX Thick 3 Ultra. The Power Color Red Devil, while not super impressive relative to the competition, did only hit 66 degrees, which is still a great result, and the same is also true of the ASRock Phantom Gaming D3. The hotspot temperatures are a little different, and here the ASUS ROG Strix is the best performer, peaking at just 68 degrees, though again it was just a degree cooler than Gigabyte's Gaming OC, and then the budget champ, the Sapphire Pulse. MSI's Gaming X ran just a few degrees hotter, while the XFX Thick 3 was again very solid, peaking at just 74 degrees. Again, the power color Red Devil was less impressive, and while 78 degrees for the hotspot temperature is still very low, relative to its competition though, it's not really a great result. Interestingly, the XFX Thick 3 Ultra matched the MSI Gaming X for the lowest GDDR6 memory temperature at just 64 degrees. The ROG Strix also does well here, peaking at just 68 degrees, and then the rest of the higher end 5600 XT models maxed out at just 72 degrees, so good results all around really. Here's just a very quick look at the 1600 RPM fan speed operating volumes. As you can see when locked at this fan speed, they are all very similar in terms of operating volume. All right, so that's all the data we have to look at. Now it's time to discuss and work out which of these models you should be hunting for. I think for that perfect balance between sort of temperature and operating volume, I feel the MSI Gaming X and Gigabyte Gaming OC models offer the best balance. If you're wanting to tinker with the card and optimize things like fan curves, voltages, and so on, then the ASUS ROG Strix is worth considering. Uh, the XFX Thick 3 Ultra, Power Color Red Devil, and ASRock Phantom Gaming D3, oh, they all work perfectly fine as well though they will need to come in at a lower price point. Actually, let's talk about pricing, and I'll start with the MSI Gaming X, because it is one of the absolute best performing 5600 XTs, but sadly, there's no point buying it. I know that sucks to hear, but it is the truth, and that's because it costs $330 US. So paying $50 over the MSRP for a 5600 XT simply makes no sense, and that's because you can get an 8GB RX 5700 series graphics card for that price. So as good as the MSI 5600 XT Gaming X is, I wouldn't pay a dollar over $300 for it, and the same really does apply to the ASUS ROG Strix model as well, which also happens to cost $330 US right now. Power Colors Red Devil is also priced too high in my opinion at $320 US, so it's another model you can forget unless it drops below $300. Models that are reasonably priced include the Gigabyte Gaming OC at $290, the ASRock Phantom Gaming D3, which also costs $290, and then the XFX Thick 3 at $300. Of that bunch I recommend looking out for the Gaming OC, it really is a great option at $290 US. In fact, the Gigabyte Gaming OC might be the very best 5600 XT graphics card period. It's either that or the Sapphire Pulse, and perhaps they're just too close to call. Both do feature amongst the best coolers of any 5600 XT, especially at the price point, and both are priced just $10 over the MSRP, making them viable options. The ASRock Phantom Gaming D3 isn't a bad option either, though both the Gaming OC and Pulse are clearly better. Still, if those cards are unavailable or cost more in your region, then the Phantom Gaming D3 is certainly worth considering. And the same also applies to the XFX Thick 3, it's certainly well worth buying at the right price. So having said all that, the only 5600 XT models I'd actively avoid include the Gigabyte Winforce OC, the XFX Thick 2 Pro, 
and the MSI Mech OC. That's not to say they're broken in any way, they're just very subpar when compared to the competition. On that note, MSI in particular needs to optimize their design. For example, something between the Mech OC and the Gaming X would make far more sense, especially for a 5600 XT Lite product. The Mech OC, it weighs just 768 grams, and a decent chunk of that is made up by plastic. So yeah, not a particularly big cooler on that model. And then we have the absolutely massive Extreme Overkill Gaming X version, which weighs in at 1410 grams. And that is roughly 80% heavier than this guy right here when you include all the plastic. So I think a model that tips the scales at around 900 grams, but doesn't feature a load of plastic would likely be optimal. Of course, the weight alone doesn't determine the success of a card, but even a good design does need a certain amount of metal. Sapphire, for example, they do well with very limited resources, but even the Pulse, that weighs in at 837 grams, and the backside of that thing isn't lathered in plastic, like what we see with the Mech OC. And also Gigabyte's Gaming OC, that weighs in at just 928 grams. Sapphire has also proven that for these more affordable GPU series with slimmer margins, offering multiple models isn't an optimal solution. Just create the best possible product you can at or very near the MSRP and forget about the premium models that make absolutely no sense for anyone. Of course, that requires additional investment in research and development. It's certainly far more cost effective to just take your 5700 series cooler and whack that on a 5600 XT. And I guess if you did a good enough job the first time around, you can certainly get away with that as Gigabyte's proven with their gaming OC model. Sapphire, on the other hand, they modified their proven 5700 series cooler design to make it a little more cost effective for the cheaper 5600 XT, and that allowed them to come in at a very competitive price. Anyway, I think we'll wrap this one up here. You now should have all the 5600 XT data you could possibly hope for, so good luck with the purchase. If you did find this video useful, there's the like button. Also subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you'd like to get more involved with the channel, then you can jump over to our Patreon account. Links in the video description. You get access to our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, Q&As, behind the scenes videos, and a few other cool things. But anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.